Hey, how about it, race fans? Richard Allen of InsideDirtRacing.com and InsideCircleTrack.com coming at you with another one of my Rich's Ramblings. And today, uh, I'm going to title this one, uh, We Need More of That. Uh, last week, and I, I wanted to get to this earlier, but I was so busy uh, this past weekend that uh, now is the first time I've had a chance to do it. But uh, last Thursday at the Atomic Speedway, you had the Lucas Oil Lake Model Dirt Series racing up there. And they were also along with the uh, all-star circuit of champion sprint car uh, series that was in action there as well and and that's something i'm saying we need more of we need those kind of combinations of events uh, put together where you've got uh, big time sprint cars and big time late models uh, all racing together you know I, one of my favorite events to go to every year is the world finals over at the dirt track at charlotte where you have the world of outlaw sprint cars and the world of outlaw late models there at the same time and uh, you know, Bristol Motor Speedway had similar events like that for the last couple of years when it was dirt, and that was fun to cover as well. But uh, uh, you you can't beat the action of uh, both major series and and uh, going at it at the same time. On last Thursday's race with the All Star Circuit of Champions, you know, had Kyle Larson to win that race, so that made it exciting too when you got such a, a big star in the house. But it doesn't always have to be that way. Uh, a couple weeks ago, back at the uh, Talladega Short Track, uh, alongside the uh, Talladega Super Speedway, where you had NASCAR racing, uh, they had the World of Outlaws late models running that big 50,000 to win event there on Saturday night. Uh, and then on preliminary, they had USCS Sprint Cars uh, racing there, and, and uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. wound up winning both of those. They wound up running both of the sprint car features on Saturday because rain got in the way on Friday night, but uh, that made it. Uh, all the more exciting too, but uh, uh, I've come to really enjoy sprint car racing here lately. Uh, lately. As a matter of fact, uh, toward the end of the month of May, I'm going to be heading up to the Atomic Speedway in Ohio for the World of Outlaws uh, sprint car race that's going to be up there, so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I still love the late models as well, uh, as much, as, uh, much now as ever before. So uh, it's always great when you can get those uh, two types of racing uh, combined together. I know it's a difficult call for promoters because uh, you have to pay two pretty significant purses to put both of them on the track at the same time. Uh, but still, whenever it can be done, I, I appreciate the fact when promoters go out of their way to make it happen. That uh, made for a real fun evening of viewing last Thursday to watch both of those uh, races play out with Hudson O'Neill winning with the Lucas Oil Lake Model Dirt Series. And like I said, Kyle Larson winning the All-Star Circuit of Champions Sprint Car Race. So, that all that uh, anything anytime you can do something like that, it's great to see. And then uh, taking kind of another step in a, a different direction here, uh, I did get to go to uh, two Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series races this past weekend. Went up to the Ponderosa Speedway in Junction City, Kentucky, on Friday night, and then went to the Florence Speedway up in uh, near Florence, Kentucky on Saturday. Man, what two great shows they were. Mike Marler, he did lead all the laps at, uh, at Ponderosa. And when you just initially look at that, it's like, oh, the same guy led the all the laps. How good of a race could it be? It's actually an excellent race. You had uh, uh, the leaders having to work through traffic. It only had one caution flag. So on a tight bull ring like that, Kentucky's baddest bull ring, uh, of course, it's going to bring lap traffic into play. So you had all the leaders having to work their way through lap traffic as uh, Marler did expertly, and then uh, he was pursued there by Hudson O'Neill and Brandon Overton. So uh, that was a great race, a lot of fun to watch, a lot of fun to be a part of. And then uh, the next night, and I, I have a little bias on uh, going uh, the, as far as my Florence trip was concerned. My oldest son went with me, so it's always great to uh, have him alongside too. But what a show they put on there at Florence. This Florence seems to always do. Uh, Ricky Thornton Jr. taking the win there, just having to – fight off just one challenge after another that came from Brandon Overton, Hudson O'Neill, Jonathan Davenport's in the mix for a while until he had some kind of problem. Bobby Pierce uh, was in the mix as well. Great run by Garrett Alberson, who came up in the top five there toward the end. So uh, a lot of excitement of that too. But uh, what I wanted to say was as far as Lucas Oil Lake Model Dirt Series is concerned and those two tracks, uh, both really efficiently, really well-run shows. Uh, they didn't overload with a bunch of uh, preliminary classes and all that stuff that they they were able just to, to run the race that you know most just be honest I mean most people came to see the 
Lucas Oil Series, and they were able to get to those very quickly. Allowed both of those features to run first, so those folks like myself that had uh, a long way to travel, get back home, were able to get out of the track and and get on their way. You know, there's a lot of travel for me this weekend. Spent a lot of time in a car. Uh, it's about almost it's about two and a half hours from where I am up to uh, Ponderosa, then came back, and then the next night uh, it's about three and a half hours up to uh, Florence. Uh, so. Uh, and then came back on the same night too. So I spent a lot of time in the car uh, this week, uh, this weekend. But uh, it was a lot of fun. It was well worth it. As my son asked my son as we were coming home, I said, "Was it worth it to uh, make that trip up there?" And he said, "Absolutely." So uh, you can't beat that when you have a, a young fan who enjoys it as well. But like I said, you know, kind of getting back to the main point. Uh, anytime there's an opportunity to kind of show a variation of different forms of racing, I think it's I think it's good for the sport. Uh, I know there are some people who are just, you know, late models only, and that's all they want to see, or some people are sprint cars only, and that's all they want to see. Uh, But I think those numbers are getting fewer and fewer here over the past few years. Maybe it's some sort of a Kyle Larson effect or something, I know, because now he he runs both types, and uh, maybe he draws people in to to see uh, the different types of racing uh, that are out there. But, you know, I go to so many... Uh, late model shows it's just one form of late models and another form of late models and another form of late models and uh, you know you walk through the pit area you can't really tell the difference in one to the other so when you go to a place where they've got you know a big modified show along with the late models or a big sprint car show along with the late models it just makes it more interesting because there's a little more variety there but anyway those are my thoughts on uh, different forms of racing and enjoyment that I Uh, get out of all of them and I I hope that you do too but uh, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, watch and listen and this is Richard Allen of InsideDirtRacing.com and InsideCircleTrack.com and I will see you at the track.